Hey team, in my last video, we talked about DAOs, but DAOs can feel very elusive. It's one of those things that you either need to dive in for yourself to figure out, or you need to at least get some concrete examples. And in a lot of the Web3 world, the examples are deeply mired in technical language. I mean, look at some of these descriptions for Metacartel projects. For-profit Moloch DAO NFT art crowd sale experiment. FOMO 3D bonding curve e-commerce. Like, what does that even mean? And how would you explain that to a regular human? So, I wanted to sit down with somebody who is doing this stuff in a way that's a bit more down to earth, but no less ambitious. Sean O'Brien is the creator of the Buy the Broncos DAO. And as the name suggests, they're aiming to buy the American NFL team, the Denver Broncos, which is, well, it's huge. It would be a huge step forward, not just for DAOs, but for the entire crypto revolution, right into the middle of American culture. Most Broncos fans aren't cypher punks or anything, but if their favorite team was owned by a DAO, I I bet those people would learn very quickly how the decentralized web works and what this all means for them. Sean, hope you're well. Thanks for chatting with us. Let's start with DAOs generally. You're an expert. You're a man who has been in DAOs for a long time. If you had to explain to your neighbor over the back fence, what is a DAO? How would you explain that to them? I would say it's a way for people to collectively get together and pull their resources or energy or time towards accomplishing a singular goal. This allows for it to expand across all walks of life across the entire globe and people will be subject to the same rules and limitations, but also be able to participate and add value and have a say in what the operations look like. That's pretty basic. I don't know if that's a 10,000 foot level, but it's a way to build a community in the 21st century. Awesome, so that's the 30,000 foot look. Let's come in a little closer. How is this different from a company or a club or even a local government? That's a great question. So it comes down to how the DAO is structured a little bit. Typically with a company, you have a scenario where it's an LLC, a C Corp, an S Corp, whatever that may be. The hierarchy is a pyramid and the cash flow and the profits flow upwards, whereas the DAO is essentially designed to significantly flatten the organizational structure so that everyone is much more on a level playing field. And in the real world, we look at like cooperatives as being the old school DAO. The most famous in the country, I think, is REI. They may also be the largest as well. But you know, your local credit union is a cooperative. A lot of farming communities operate in a cooperative model. And so what it does is it tries to flatten the hierarchical structure to more evenly and effectively distribute the proceeds from the DAO's effort amongst the people who are participating, or in this case, like with a cooperative, a member. To answer a club, in theory, a lot of clubs could operate as DAOs, right? The difference being, I think clubs are oftentimes limited geographically. Certainly there are a lot of clubs that are not, but as a DAO suggests, you know, there's autonomy and there's decentralization. And so you don't have the club where it's a face-to-face -face, like bowling league that you're meeting in theory, right? You have folks from all across the world who may not know each other, but are coming together for the common good that the DAO has proposed. And local government, I think there's a lot of difference there. Nothing against governing bodies, but you know the machinations of government are typically really slow and uh, inefficient in a lot of people's minds and don't represent the voice of the people, the Vox Populi. Whereas a DAO is intended to specifically be that and to leverage the blockchain. And so there's a level of transparency that exists within uh, you know, a DAO structure that simply does not exist in government. Local governments, obviously you can attend a board meeting and that sort of thing. So there is some limited amount of of transparency at a very, very small level. But with a DAO, in theory, if it's operating in a, in a responsible way, you have so many people from walks of life who can essentially see what's going on for the most part, rather than have obscurity, rather than have people shoved out if their voice is a popular one. It depends on how the DAO is structured. So it sounds like a lot of the qualities of DAOs are that they are flattened. They're not nearly as hierarchical as a conventional organization. They're transparent in operations, especially the flow of money, and they're maybe more equitable. So tell me how this is done technologically. DAOs are part of the crypto revolution. How is this tied in? Yeah, so in our opinion, the way we view it is that a lot of the crypto revolution and Web3 have amazing things that are coming to fruition and there are really smart folks involved and really smart organizations and entities involved in furthering blockchain, NFTs, smart contracts, tokens, etc. We view all those things essentially as tools that can be utilized for a DAO. And so as much as an NFT has a great degree of utility from a collectible standpoint, we view an NFT as something that can be utilized within the DAO 
to provide certain access to folks. All of that, we think, are the tools that have come together and coalesced for the purpose of a DAO. And we think that that type of organizational structure is revolutionary because for the last 150 years, for the most part, businesses, no matter how technologically advanced they are, they're always shoved into a C Corp or an S Corp or these days an LLC, whether you're making basic widgets or you're the most technologically advanced company on earth, you're still an S-Corp or you're still a C-Corp. We're forcing all of these different business models and organizational structures into these old antiquated ways of doing business, whereas a DAO really just completely explodes that. Our goals, I think, are clear with our efforts personally, but at the same time, our hope is that it gets this sort of model out there so that people can see its applicability in so many different parts of life. One common scenario that could be really applicable, for example, with a DAO is just simple common ownership of an apartment complex. You could have where right now, maybe there's a landlord and the tenants collectively, you know, pay rent to the landlord in a simple business model, right? A DAO could come in and allow for the tenants to purchase their own apartment complex and own it and operate it not have to deal with an HOA and things of that nature. And so when you have these sorts of real world tangible examples of how a DAO operates, people who are much smarter than me, people who are much more creative than me, frankly, come along and they find solutions because this is a really flexible model that is highly equalizing. You know, there's a phrase I've heard recently from a lot of people that I don't generally agree with politically, where they're talking about rather than a shareholder arrangement with companies, as with a conventional stockholder, they would like to see a stakeholder arrangement. And those would be people who are impacted by the organization. So these people are thinking of like citizens of a nation or the, the tenants in a building, or I don't know, it's a phrase I only heard recently and I'm still getting used to it. I, I don't have a ton of examples, but this sounds a little bit like politically, this could be the best of both worlds, right? You're financially invested in something, but also you're a stakeholder in that you have a vested stake in the quality and the outcome and the final product. That's exactly right. And the current generation is much more, I think, adaptable and amenable to the idea of shared ownership. And so it seems to be a very fertile situation for people to come together and say, hey, look, you know what? There is common good or common ownership that we can all collectively agree upon. And since we have smart contracts in place in this sort of scenario, there's no wiggle room for one single person to come and screw everybody over. It's a system that allows for you to be a participatory active member and then receive the benefits of that effort. If you are being being paid as an employee, you are inherently creating more value than you are being paid. Otherwise, the company is not profitable. And so your value that you're creating is going somewhere else and it's not to you. And so if you can democratize a healthy amount of that in a responsible way, why wouldn't you? frankly. Okay, I want to dive into your DAO. Tell me what you're trying to do, Sean. This is pretty ambitious. It is our DAO, right? I, I want to make, yes. <laughs> it's very important. The DAO is called By the Broncos. And you're right, it is highly ambitious, shall we say, to use a positive slant on things, right? But our purpose is to buy the Denver Broncos, most likely going to be the most expensive sale of a professional sports team here in the United States at around $4 billion in terms of its price tag. So it is a monumental Herculean effort. But when you compare it to any average day, an IPO on the standard stock exchange for, you know, a, a new catheter, you know, might raise $4 billion, you know, or more. But that type of money is a lot for any one individual, but as a community, it isn't that crazy, especially when you include the Web3 community, because we know that the Web3 community in a lot of ways are successful. The amount of money relative to what gets raised on a daily basis out there for companies, organizations, SPACs these days, man, SPACs these days raise and insane amounts of money. And it's as best I can tell, it's a dude in his basement. This is something that's completely different. This is an established, well-known brand. The Denver Broncos, one of the most successful teams in the NFL, deathly loyal fan base. We know that there's a lot of value and we know that if we provide an opportunity for fan ownership, the one thing that is guaranteed is that Denver Broncos will become the most popular NFL team in the world because everyone across the globe will want to participate. So this is not just a gimmick. This sounds like a genuine strategy to drive value and engagement for this team beyond what the current structure can do. Yes, and we know, again, we're not naive to the fact that the NFL up to this point has not viewed ownership 
outside of a very, very limited scope, right? In terms of uh, team ownership, they've had a very, very small, you know, narrow window through which very wealthy individuals pass and they become owners of an NFL team. But we look at this and say, look, this is coming. And if it's not now in five years, it will be all over the place because especially if we can be successful here, we view three, four or five years down the road, many, many teams opening up, even if it's a partial ownership, right? Teams will have the ability and we think willingness to open up the, the doors for fans to own their respective sports team and their professional team because fans are the lifeblood of the team, man. Like at the end of the day, they're the ones who keep the engine going. And at this point, I think fans have said, or at least they feel like, hey, it's time for us to actually have a participatory role and to see some sort of benefit from our loyalty. The unfortunate reality is even in the recent past, just with the NFL, we've seen teams pick up and move in St. Louis. We've seen a team pick up and move from San Diego to LA. So two teams go to LA. We've seen a team leave Oakland for Vegas. In a lot of other parts of the world, having a team leave and go to another territory is unheard of, man. And it's time for the United States, I think, to view it in a similar fashion. And the best way, in our opinion, and most solid way to make sure that the fan base is not only actively engaged, but also ensures that the team stays where it's supposed to is to have fan ownership. And that's why Green Bay has been so successful in our opinion, right? Is that they're a small marketplace, but they kill it when it comes to their loyal fan base. And that's because they have to some limited capacity shareholders. Talk to me about how this started. What's the origin story? Um, so the origin story was with a different team. This was a year and a half ago, roughly. Real Salt Lake in Utah, the MLS team was up for sale. And we began with this idea and our process and development took quite a while because there are a lot of legal ramifications and hoops to jump through. By the time we felt confident that we were in a position to make things public and make things known with respect to our intentions for Real Salt Lake, the writing was essentially on the wall when it came to their sale and we were informed as such. And so we knew throughout that whole process that the Broncos would eventually be up for sale because their owner had passed. And so the next thought was, we're in the Rocky Mountains, we're fans. And so that's going to be something that happens here soon. And so formally, I believe it was February 1st, the Broncos went up for sale. A short time thereafter was when we started to make our intentions known. And our perspective is that if we're going to do this, we have to do it right. And we want in 50 years from now, this to still be operational. In 100 years, when you and I are six feet under, we still want this to be operational. And so in order to do so, we have to do it right from the get-go. And that inherently requires us to consider primarily securities law. Right, because one of the things that crypto in general and NFTs in some respects are probably getting away with here and there is they're skirting securities laws, potentially, in our opinion, right? And we know that we're garnering a lot of attention and we're basically have a huge target on our back saying, SEC, look at us. And so our goal is to go and get a no action letter from the SEC to make sure that our business model for this DAO is not determined to be a security. And the way we are going about it is the DAO will be legally structured as a cooperative, meaning that in a simple process, right, you, I, whoever else may want to participate, in order to begin to participate, you would buy a membership into the legal cooperative in the form of an NFT. It essentially functions as your Costco card, right? You can't get into Costco without your Costco card. It's a one-time fee that you get an NFT in return. And the utility of that NFT outside of being the, you know, the traditional NFT, it also has essential digital fingerprint that gets you in the door to participate in the cooperative. Once you're in the cooperative as a member, then you can begin to participate from a standpoint of acquiring tokens, uh, voting, and all of these other things. And the big difference between that and what currently exists, in our opinion, through a lot of these other organizational structures is that a security is typically like, I buy stock in Amazon, I sit on my butt, and I hope that it goes up in value. I don't have any say or influence in how Amazon performs, and therefore it is a security. However, with a cooperative, because we are active members, and we're participating in the furtherance of the cooperative being profitable, not profitable, et cetera, we can then avail ourselves of the proceeds and benefits and profits that come from mem being members of the cooperative, and therefore it is not a security. And so we're very, very stoked, right, for lack of a better term, to operate in this fashion. 
It also functions, frankly, in a lot of the um, the legal requirements, or rather the constitutional bylaw requirements of the NFL, we think that this works in our favor as well. So we have the DAO as the engine that fires and powers everyone's cooperation. I know that was super lengthy, but it's really important for us to kind of get through that. What we believe is the future in terms of the legal structure for a DAO in the United States. It sounds like you're really laying the groundwork for this to be more than a novelty. You're trying to drive real world adoption for real organizations and communities to use this structure in their regular lives. Do you think that's gonna happen? Is this going to go mainstream? We're obviously believers. We wouldn't be doing this if we weren't. And to answer your question, we don't look at this as a novelty. If this were something where someone was trying to be irresponsible and just make a quick buck, we'd be taking money. And we are not taking money right now intentionally because we want to have the proper okays in place from a regulatory standpoint and others to make sure that when we do this, it's something that is done responsibly, ethically, and it's going to last. I feel like right now we're in the Dow stage of like a 1994 conversation trying to convince the local florist why they need a dot com. So our belief is that the adoption in five to 10 years, close to 100% of all businesses will have some aspect of their business on the blockchain. I don't think that that's unreasonable to say in the next five years. We think that it's now a good crossroads where early adoption of Web3, they understand the concept, they believe in it. And the technology has gotten to the point where we can allow for people who maybe are just not interested in the tech, but are interested in ownership. And the tech has allowed it for it to become so simple that people can actually participate not having maybe all of the bona fides of a Web3, you know, true believer, but still be able to have an active and participatory role in this. Where can people learn more about what you're doing and how do they get involved? Uh, by the Broncos uh, on Twitter. <laughs> yeah, that's probably the best way. Discord as well. Um, by the Broncos.com. Again, it's very important. We are not raising funds right now, but if you follow us, we will keep people apprised and updated and to the best of our ability, educated on all the nuances and when that will eventually occur because we are targeting to have some presence in Florida on March 27th, which is an NFL owners meeting down there. And uh, so between now and then, lots of things will happen. But um, but yeah, right now, that is the best way to keep updated is by the Broncos on our socials or at by the Broncos.com. Perfect. Any final thoughts, Sean? What's what's the one thing you want people to understand about DAOs and what you're doing? If it's not us, it's going to be somebody else. We might as well be us, man. It might as well be the Broncos because in Colorado, just to kind of lay the groundwork, right? There is a governor that's highly supportive of this. He has been fairly successful as an individual in the tech community. In the House of Representatives, he was the founder and served as a co-chair of the Blockchain Caucus. He was the first person, I believe, in the House of Representatives to accept Bitcoin as a method to contribute to his campaign. And here in the summertime, I believe Colorado with him as, as uh, governor, they will be the first state to accept Bitcoin to pay your taxes. And so he's very much at the forefront of this sort of technological movement. Plus Colorado, out of all the states that we've reviewed um, from a legal standpoint, has the best cooperative model in terms of legal establishment. And so we see a lot of tailwinds in terms of our effort. We know there are a lot of headwinds though. We're not naive to those facts, but you know, the hopeful thing is that with a lot of the support, there can be some modicum of success. We have our goals, but at the end of the day, just getting people informed and educated, honestly, is a step in the right direction. So that's by the Broncos. This isn't Sean's first foray into DAOs or even trying to buy a sports team with a DAO. So even if this doesn't ultimately happen with the Broncos, I'd keep watching. Sean is a tenacious dude and my money says he pulls this off with a major team one way or another. What do you think? Should we do more interviews on this channel? Who else should we talk to? Other founders, DAO leaders, projects? Let me know down in the comments and we will talk about it again in a future video. Thanks team.